Kingdom blessings and greetings. I'm King David, the vessel of Yielding Music Group, inviting you to stay tuned for season six of Let's Talk to the Lord, a gospel radio talk show created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Keep it locked right there. Trying to do what's right, but it
and blessed greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for season six of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is independent gospel recording artist Brian C. Hines. Kingdom, Brian C. Hines and Company has brought to the gospel table the songs of praise and worship that has delighted national audiences from coast to coast. Kingdom Brian has also shared the stage with Dr. Bobby Jones, Dwayne Woods, Sherry Jones Moffat, Troy Sneed, Alvin Darling, and Vicki Winans. Brother Brian C. Hines, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Apostle John E. Ross, thank you for having me on such a great occasion. Amen. Before we begin our discussion, please, sir, share with the kingdom your story of repentance when you began your journey with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Well, Apostle, I grew up in the church. Uh, I've been in church all of my life. And, of course, I love everything about church. I love uh, hearing the choir sing. I love seeing musicians playing. And I got an early start, and I was a musician, and I watched other people, and I was a musician. And I would say probably by the age of 14, I was uh, singing in the choir as well. But I I really... uh, began to be a uh, full-time musician. And so I stopped singing in the choir. And I would say around 16, it was, I think I was 16, and that was when I got saved for the first time. And I have been walking with God ever since then. Amen. And Brother Hines, please, Announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Our topic is impacting and changing lives all around the world. Amen. Go ahead, sir. Okay, so that is a topic that I can really, really speak from or speak on um, just with my own experiences. I have been, you know, uh, on this musical journey, and I, I spoke of being 16 when I got saved and started my walk with God. Uh, at age 16, was when I also started recording, uh, started writing songs, started recording, started uh, producing. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that now for about 25 years. But I got my, I got my inspiration uh, to do recording somewhat different uh, from what, you know, one would usually be inspired. I saw this guy, uh, that was this artist, a local artist here in Mobile, Alabama, and he was a great, great, powerful, powerful, talented artist. And he had a concert and I think at this moment I was probably about 14. I want to say I was about 14 or 15. And 
I went to the concert, and it was a CD release concert for their first CD. And the name of this uh, group was uh, Higher Calling. And the leader of the group, her name is uh, Herbert Woods. And so I went to the concert, and they were doing the songs. I think at the time that I got to the concert, I got there kind of late. And they were already up uh, performing, ministering their uh, some of the songs from the CD. And, of course, it wasn't a CD at that time. It was a tape cassette. Uh, and so I was listening to the band, and I heard of I, – I could hear a full band. I heard – I, I thought I heard a bass guitar. I thought I heard a lead guitar. I thought uh, I thought I heard a drummer. I thought I heard a keyboard player, and I thought I heard an organist. And I thought I heard some more keyboards. So I'm really, really just enjoying their ministry. And so I stand up on my feet to see where all of this, where these musicians were. And so as I stood up, everything that I thought I was hearing, I did not see. I saw the drummer. I saw a keyboard player. And, of course, I saw a guitar player. I did not see a bass player. I did not see an organ player, and I did not see a second keyboard player. And so I said, well, something is not right. Maybe they're somewhere else that I just can't see them. Maybe they're on the other side of the church. And I said, well, I hope they're not outside in the uh, outside of the door. I said, well, surely they will be inside altogether. And so... I finally came to the realization that it was only one keyboard player, a guitar player, and a drummer. So I said, okay, I think the keyboard player is doing all of the other music. So it turns out I kept on listening, and I was finally convinced that that's what it was. And... I stayed to the end of the concert, and I bought a cassette tape. And a few days later, I called. There was a number on the cassette tape, and I called the number. And it happened to be the leader and founder of the group, which was Herbert Woods. And I told him, how much I really, really enjoyed the musical. I enjoyed the ministry. And I said, but hey, that that one guy was playing all of the instruments that were not there. And he said, yes, that was this guy. That's this guy by the name of Duwan Handy. And I said, okay. I, and I, I told him, I just said, you know, that really inspired me because when I was growing up in church, I always watched the musicians, and I always wanted to learn how to play. And uh, after that conversation, I uh, was able to see them in some more concerts ministering. And so that guy, Dewan Handy, is the reason, with the help of God, is the reason why I, that is the reason why I am doing what I am doing today. 
And our topic is impacting and changing lives all around the world. So the ministry of Herbert Woods and Higher Calling impacted my life. And seeing that musician playing all those instruments that weren't there, well, he was playing all the, the playing the sounds of those instruments that weren't there. And that stood out to me, and it impacted me, and it changed my life. Because I said, I want to start recording. I want to start writing songs. So he went on to tell me, who this where I asked them where did they get it recorded at and they told me the studio, told me uh gave me the number and I I started writing I, I would say sixteen I started writing songs. After I got saved I started writing songs and one of my first songs was Give Me Wisdom and that song it said Give me wisdom from up above. That was just some of the, uh, one of the lines to that song. And God began to give me wisdom as I had prayed and requested. He began to give me wisdom. And so uh, fast forwarding, I went to that studio and the experience was not so great. It was not what I expected. And um, I then said I was going to, I wanted to purchase my own equipment and start recording. And I said that I did not want to ever treat people or treat anybody the way I was treated during that studio session. So I got my first job also at age 16, and that was uh, working at Wendy's, flipping hamburgers. And I saved up enough money to buy me a keyboard from Circuit City, and it was a Yamaha. I can't remember the exact model. So... I bought that keyboard, and it had the capabilities to record different tracks. So I started programming and recording the songs that I had written. But then God blessed me. My brother, my oldest brother, financed me a a, a professional-grade keyboard, professional-model keyboard. Um, I remember it was a Korg Trinity keyboard, 61-key keyboard. That allowed me to take my music to another level. And from that, I was able to start doing music for other artists and uh, other uh, songwriters. People were sharing their, uh, they were sharing their ideas with me. And so um, the rest is history. And so back to the topic, impacting and changing lives all around. So that brings me to 2005. Of course, that, all of that stuff happened uh, around the 90s. So in 2000, I had my first uh, single that I had recorded, and it was on the radio. I was able to, in 2000, I want to say 2003, uh, attend the Gospel Music Workshop of America. And that further impacted my life because I got a chance to see some of the major artists and like Kirk Franklin and uh, Ricky Dillard. And I attended a class that Ricky Dillard was teaching, and he was teaching about how to be effective as an artist. 
And I took all of that stuff in. So that experience impacted my life. In 2005, it, uh, the topic brings me to 2005, the song, All Things Are Possible. I wrote that song in 2005 with the expectation to release my first CD project, and it did not happen. I did, I did not get it. I recorded the song, started recording the song, and I got the opportunity to work with another um, group that was well-known here locally in Mobile, Alabama, by the name of the Davis Family. And they asked me, did I have any songs that they could use for their project? I said, well, I have a song that I'm working on for my project, but um, I don't think that I'm going to be able to do the project now. So I let them use the song, and that is the song that we hear today, All Things Are Possible. And so they went on, they wrote, they, they, they recorded the song, but the leader of the group experienced challenges with his health. And so it got them down, him down, and him being the leader of the group, they had to put the release of the project on hold. And I had recorded and produced six, I think it was six or eight songs for that project. And so this, that song, All Things Are Possible, never got released. And I was faced with a lot of financial challenges during that time. And... I was able to finally uh, get a little financially stable in 2009. So I was able to do my first project, record, started recording it in 2008 and finished recording in 2009. And I released that project entitled It's Not Over. And... After that, I experienced more challenges, and they happened to be financial challenges. And I was going to just put all things are possible on the second project. I never got to that. Fast forward, in 2014, I released, well, I had another single that I did release in 2010, um, but I didn't do anything with it because, I became frustrated, um, and I became angry with God because of the things that were happening, and I said that I wasn't going to do music ever again. So I took a break. And in 2014, a well-known radio promoter called me and said, hey, what are you going to do with that song? The name of the song is Give God the Praise, featuring C. Ashley Brown. And... I said, I'm not going to do anything with it. And I told him a little bit about my channel. He said, let's go ahead and do, and I will send it out, and we'll see what happens. Sent it out, and to God be the glory, the song charted in the top 40. Okay, that was great, but then afterwards, I experienced those financial challenges again. And I had also revised All Things Are Possible, but still couldn't use it because of the financial challenges. 2017, we tried it again with another artist, did not succeed. So I said, well, I don't think this is ever going to happen. But here it is in 2021, a song that I had written in 2005, is now complete. And it happened to be completed. And I said, God, the only, and I had given up on music. I had given up and said that I was done with music. I didn't want to, I, I, I said if, if I was going to be successful in music, it would have happened by now. Now we're looking at 
I'm 25 years in. And, Apostle, I said, God, the only way I would do something is I have to have a major artist featured on it. And God began to give me some names. And Kim Burrell was one of the names. And now, here it is, Apostle, and to those of you who are listening out there. Here it is now, in 2021, that God blessed me. In October 27, 2021, God blessed us to release All Things Are Possible, All Things Are Possible, featuring Kim Burrell. And, and Apostle, now I have been getting so many great responses from people all around the world, people in uh, Afghanistan, people in Canada, people in Iran, people in South Africa, everywhere telling me how much the song have impacted and changed their lives. And my prayer to God was, God, I want somebody to sing this song that can minister this song in such a way that it would impact and change lives all around the world. And God did just that. Ladies and gentlemen, back to Apostle John E. Ross. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom, our topic of conversation for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is impacting lives all around the world. And kingdom, our physical success means nothing without spiritual success. To become a more impactful person requires a change in attitude and a change in mindset. We have to change from all fleshly and worldliness. Being impactful requires revelation and the anointing of God's word. We must walk out our spiritual journeys, applying that word in our daily lives, which is a challenge at times. We have to understand how to repent and what it means to repent. It requires commitment, commitment to our purpose, commitment to faith, and commitment to love. Being impactful means to push into drive. It, in sense, is striking forcefully. To be impactful in the kingdom is making strikes against Satan and the kingdom of darkness, which will also require a great deal of courage. Brother Brian, I am not sure if the listening audience realizes that to impact and be the instrument of invoking change into the lives of others means that we are getting in the face, if you will, and posturing ourselves with our hands up in the fighting stance. If we are changing lives, many may not realize to expect pushback from the kingdom of darkness. And Satan and his demons are some dirty fighters. They will use the most lying, sneaky, behind-your-back tactics. He'll use or cause any problem, including family, spouse, finances, health, including causing premature death to try to stop God's people. That's why our minds have to be renewed because our victory is in Jesus. 
God is aware of Satan's tactics. God said in John 8:44 that Satan is the father of lies. John declared he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Yeshua HaMashiach defeated the kingdom of darkness. Satan is no match for God, but for us to be victorious, we have to do it God's way. And God has chosen different tactics for us to win, which has messed up the world because the world operates from a mentality of an eye for an eye, which means punishment equal to the offense. If someone puts out another's eye, the offender's eye should also be put out. Now, don't get me wrong, God will punish all evil. God is a God of justice. He is on our side, but God requires our obedience, trust, and faith for God's desired outcome and not our own flesh desires. That's why to be impactful, we have to operate after the spirit and not to fulfill after the flesh. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, is our greatest example of being impactful and changing lives with the training of disciples. Yeshua, Jesus, changed the world. With that change came a very bloody battle with the kingdom of darkness. My message is to encourage those that are on the battlefield for our Lord. You are more than conquerors. And many times the enemy will have us feeling like we are defeated because we are facing fiery trials. But to stand firm in knowing the hell you face is because you are impacting and changing lives. And I wanted to educate someone to know that as we remove lives from the kingdom of darkness, Satan will be saying, put them up with his fist ready to hit back. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 declares, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Second Timothy 3 and 16 declares all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. James 1 and 17 declares every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with those there is variation or shadows due to change. Galatians 5 and 1 declares, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. 2 Timothy 2 and 22, so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Romans 12 and 1 declares, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Kingdom, all of these passages of scriptures teach us how to be impactful and how to change lives, but allow God to be your vengeance and decide punishment. Brother Brian, please, sir, give the final words on our topic of discussion, being impactful and changing lives around the world. Yes, Apostle, I only have a few words uh, to say um, in regards to our topic impacting and changing lives all around the world, and that is trust the process because process is never pretty and it's never, never, Simple, and usually 
if it is simple, it's something that doesn't last. Hmm. When the process it requires a lot of work, things that usually have the most work last the longest. So trust the process. And I want to say this. Your life would never be the same. Now, and I will say this, I want to declare that your troubles are over. Now, I didn't say that you won't have challenges. There, there, there are differences between challenges and trouble. Trouble is something that can come and overtake you, overshadow you. And trouble can be unbearable. However, a challenge is something that you're trying to figure out that you're usually faced with that's, some, that's unexpected. Even though trouble can be unexpected, trouble is more long-term. A challenge is usually short-term. But a challenge can be figured out. And you grow when you are challenged. Back to Apostle. Amen, amen, and amen again. Brian C. Hines, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. Yes, uh, I am a uh, music producer, songwriter, recording engineer, mixing engineer, Max, uh, mastering engineer, and I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And all you have to look for is Brian C. Hines. That is B-R-I-A-N-C-H-I-N-E. Amen. And please tell us about the music being featured during the podcast. We just heard all things featuring Kim Burrell, all things are possible featuring Kim Burrell, and we're getting ready to hear We Worship You. Yes, All Things Are Possible uh, is a song that I wrote in 2005. And everything was manifested with it in 2021. And I got a chance to work with the one and only Kim Burrell. And we recorded that song, or at least her part, in Houston, Texas, uh, the week prior to the release. And it was released on October 27, 2021. We Worship You was also written, written uh, We Worship You was also written in 2005, and it was released in 2009 on my debut album, album. It was released in 2009 on my debut album, It's Not Over, and it have impacted and changed lives. Well, both songs all Things Are Possible and We Worship You have impacted and changed lives all around the world. Amen. And how may the kingdom purchase your music and support your ministry? The music is available on iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, Amazon Music, YouTube music, and also Spotify. Amen. And how may the kingdom support your ministry? Well, uh, the kingdom can support my ministry by, uh, we do have, uh, let's see, we do have a cash app that's available if uh, the kingdom wanted to donate. Uh, the cash app, the cash tag is 
it shall come to pass too. Let me spell that. I T S H A L L C O M E T O P A S S T O O. That is once again. It shall come to pass too. Amen. And Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You can download episodes from speaker.com under Let's Talk to the Lord. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time at KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and SensationalSoundsRadio.net. We are there every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Central Time. Please write to us at Let's talk to the Lord at yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You can now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio international, and let's talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, we are now on Roku. On Roku, search MyTuner Radio. After you find MyTuner Radio, you can search Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Station. And if you would like to listen to the podcast, please go to your Roku, search iHeartRadio, then search Let's Talk to the Lord gospel radio talk show and we are there on roku let's talk to the lord radio international is your 24-hour station for talk news radio interviews and christian music on Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, with author Kimberly V. Porter. And my music is available on Amazon in all digital stores. Lord, give me another chance, featuring recording artist Sean Scales and Tamara Lloyd. And my first EP is still available, Remember Now, Thy Creator, under the name Minister John E. Ross. So, kingdom, until next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you every day living your lives at the foot of the cross, under a open heaven, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Every tongue.
will confess. Every tongue will confess. The name of the Jesus. The name of Jesus is a marvel of the name. There's no other name I know. There's no other name I know. There's no other name I call. There's no other name I call. Come on, everybody, there's a name.